Hello and welcome. Today we're going to talk about creating a quiz app with React. And we're going to use the example of a simple math quiz. And the reason we're going to use a math quiz is because it's easy to generate answers using math. What we want to do is to have 10 questions and each of these questions has four choices, one of which is correct. The player will be presented with a series of questions and he needs to answer and select the right answer and he'll be presented with a score at the end which will tell him how many answers he got right. So the state is stored in something like this. The quiz state has the current question, has a list of questions and it has a list of answers. Now how do we manage the state? We could do it with a use state function but this is the perfect opportunity to look into how use reducer works. Why should we look into use reducer? And what is use reducer useful for? Why is it a good idea to learn how to use use reducer? Use reducer is useful if you want to manage complex states that interact, where the parts interact with each other. If you have more than three use states and the, in, the states are interdependent, if you want to manage interactions between states, and basically, if you want to get serious as a React developer, you need to learn Use Reducer. Before we go any further, my name is David. I spent over 20 years developing and 15 of those in the video game industry. And for me, coding itself is a game. A game of the imagination, a game of exploration, and more than anything else, a game of construction. I love building things. So come, let's build together. Now the first question is, what is a reducer? A reducer takes a state and an action and it produces a new state. Now the important thing to note is that reducer does this and only this. It's what you'd call a pure function. What's a pure function? A pure function is a function that always returns the same output given a specific input. It never modifies the inputs and it never has any side effects. So typically we can't generate the random questions within the reducer because it would not have the same output each time since it calls upon the random function. Now if we take the example of this simple state where it's an object that has a field of called count with an initial value of zero our update function takes this field and increases it by one and then reduce and then returns the state but if we call this function we end up modifying the initial state because the function actually returns the same function that has been sent in as a parameter the way to do this properly is to produce a new state which has the same value for each field in this case create a count value and we return a new object with a count field. The original state is not modified. Now if we have a more complex state, for example here we have one with count which is equal to zero and then field another field with other value whose value is 42, we can create the new object with the spread operator. We deconstruct it and only set the field that has been changed. This allows us to easily create a new object with a modified field without modifying the initial state. Now, what are the actions we want to manage? There are two. First, set state sets, resets the state with an initial state. The second is answer. This stores the answer. How are we going to type these actions? There's a simple way, which is kind of the naive way. We have the action, we have the type, which defines the type of the action and a payload which is of any type but we can do better we can create an action type which is the union of two types specific to each action so here we have the quiz action which is the union between an action set state which has a payload which is a quiz state and an action of type answer whose payload is a string this allows our IDE to determine if we are correctly defining the type 
of our payload. Here is our reducer. Our reducer takes a state and it takes an action and it has a switch case which manages each case for each action type. We have the part of the function that manages the answer and the part that manages the set state. Now the part that manages the set state is very simple. It simply returns the payload. What's more interesting is what's happening inside the answer part. Here we're deconstructing the array of answers and adding the payload as an additional item in the answer. The reason we don't simply push the answer onto the answers array is that this would actually be modifying the initial state. To return the state, we deconstruct the state itself and add in the answers and the current step. Now let's have a look at our quiz page. It's very simple. Our quiz retrieves the state and the dispatch function from the use reduction function. The use reduction function takes the quiz reducer, which we've just seen, and an initial quiz state. Our use reducer returns the current state and it returns the dispatch function. And this dispatch function is what allows us to dispatch new actions and update the state. Here we see it in the use effect hook that we're using. This dispatches an initial set state with a random state when the component is initially loaded. And then we take the state and we take the dispatch and we use them as parameters for the two components, the question and the results. And these are displayed depending on how many questions have been answered. If there are 10, the results are displayed. If there are less than 10, it's the questions that are displayed. Both of these get the state and the dispatch. Now let's have a look at the results component. In the results component, as we can see, the state and the dispatch are being passed as parameters. What we do is we calculate the score by comparing the questions and the answers and finding which of the questions have been correctly answered. And we display this score inside the HTML return. We also have a button which has a on click listener and this click listener calls the try again. In this try again function we dispatch an action. This action is the set state action which sets a new state and it initializes it with a random state. So this is how we can restart the action. Now let's have a look at the question component. In the same way the question component takes the state and the dispatch as parameters. It gets the current question from the state. If there is no current question it returns an empty return. If there is a question, it displays the question text. Question component then lists the possible choices. Each of these choices is displayed within the map function. This map function displays a list item for each item. It's important to note that each item is, has a key item that's set. When the user clicks on any of these items, it runs the answer function, which dispatches an action of type answer with the payload with the value of the item and this saves the answer in the state. Now let's take a look at what this looks like in practice. Now I hope you enjoyed this video, I certainly did. And um, if it, any of this was of value to you, if you found it fun, please hit that like button. And if you have any questions, if anything's not clear, feel free to leave a comment. Thank you very much. Bye.